In this video, we're going to take a look at a Jetpack module that can actually help you become a better writer. The module is called Spelling and Grammar, and it's right here. It uses a service called After the Deadline. Let's take a look at that real quick. After the Deadline is a service that has a free service as well as a pay service, and WordPress taps into the free service, and you can see right here what they offer. After the Deadline is not just for WordPress. It is a spelling and grammar service that can be integrated with any piece of software. So let's activate it. Then go to Configure. Now something I want to point out here is that the configuration for it is actually in the user's own profile. Each user on the site can set up the spelling and grammar tools to their own likings. Now it provides a button that we're going to look at, but optionally you can also automatically proofread when a poster page is first published or when it's updated. And then there are some sets of rules that you can look for. You can look for bias language, you can look for cliché, you can look for clichés, complex phrases, diacritical marks, double negatives, hidden verbs, jargon, passive voice, phrases to avoid. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure they could tell you. And redundant phrases. Right here you can learn more about what these options mean. Then it also supports these multiple languages and you can ask WordPress to automatically detect the language of the post. And lastly, here you can put in some words and phrases to ignore. These may be words that are related specifically to your audience and that they will automatically understand, and so you don't care about being proofread or not. So I'm going to save my profile, and then let's go to posts. I have a post here called Louis L'Amour. Let's take a look at that one. So here's this post. It's not too long, no pictures, and right here is a proofread writing button. And when I click it, it runs out to after the deadline, checks the text, and comes back. And now we have some underlines. This says it uses the passive voice. So I'm going to click explain. They suggest we revise was done with active voice. Then I have one here with a red underline, and it's simply spelling. It's spelled the way I want, so I'm going to ignore always. And if we go down, is set, also passive voice. Active voice makes it clear who is doing what. Here are some more spelling issues, but these are names, so I'm going to ignore them. But I miss the T here in East Coast. A hidden verb, aka nominalization, is a verb made, in, made into a noun. They often need extra words to make sense. Strong verbs are easier to read and use less words. You should revise did an excellent to bring out the verb. I'm going to leave that one because I like it. Here are some more spelling errors. Here's another passive voice. Now this one is blue and is a complex expression. And so what they're doing here is trying to set the ease of reading to a certain level. They think the word location should be changed to something like place or site. So after the deadline does a variety of things. It checks for spelling, it checks for grammar, it checks for complexity, it checks for bias and cliches, all those things that we checked. It's like having an editor. The difference is it's a computer and it makes mistakes. And so while it's very clever and it can be very helpful, in the end you are the one that makes the decision. For example, I left most of my text but it was nice to see that I misspelled East. If writing below a certain complexity is important to you for ease of reading, then spelling and grammar is going to be great. If you struggle with spelling, then it's going to be even better. 
It may not be for you. It's not for everyone. But if it is, it'll work great.